Well, today I wanted to make a video a little less poppy. We don't do a lot of these just us hanging out and having a cup of coffee and talking to each other. I thought that would be a really cool video for today. Longer form content. So if you just want to hear me talk, put on some headphones and, and chat, or we could just, you know, have a conversation uh, face to face. But I wanted to talk about my year 2020, what it was like for me to be a restaurant owner during this crazy year. As you know, we've made the headlines more than any other industry. I think the restaurant industry in particular got a lot of press because we're basically known as being like a weak and feeble industry because there's just so many of us mom and pop restaurants out there. You know, you can't compare us to the airline industry where they are titans in the game and they have commanding power to wield against the federal government for aid and assistance and bailouts. It just doesn't work that way for the service industry, uh, for the restaurant industry specifically. My story is a little different and I, I want to take you along the journey that I had in 2020 from the video where I sat down right here with you and, and spilled my guts out and cried to you and, and just told you that I needed you now more than ever about the to-go orders and just anything you can do to help me out to today where I'm opening a second restaurant amidst a global pandemic, civil unrest, political unrest, all these things that are happening to our country and to this world, here I am making moves that I have only dreamed of in the past. So how did, how did this happen? How did I get here? Uh, a lot of people ask me, a lot of people have supported me and applauded me, but a lot of people are still like in the unknown, like how did this happen, Costas? I thought you were hurting and I thought you were suffering, and I was, and I did, but along the way, I had a very, very, I, know, I had an angel looking out for me in the form of my community, uh, my friends, I call my friends my community because they're one and the same. The entire city of, of, of uh, Raleigh, of Rockwall, I made that viral video, obviously it went viral. I didn't mean for it to go viral. I, I posted it that night. You don't, uh, there was no, I didn't even make a nice thumbnail or anything. I just posted the video and everyone shared it. And I guess the authenticity came across and we had a line out the door. We were doing so many sales. My staff couldn't believe it. Um, culinary team couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. A week after the pandemic hit, Nama Maran, she is the CEO of Cheetah Technologies. It's a restaurant delivery company. She called me and she said, Kosis, you have this incredible gift of telling stories through, through video. What are you doing? And, and at this point uh, in March, I didn't know how long none of us knew the the depth of this virus and, and the death that it was going to take on on our country, on the world. And all I could think about was, you know, that video where I was crying was going to be replaced by by dead people, by every, like, you know, the death rate being 10% or 50, some people were saying 15% or 20%. And no one was going to care about, you know, a struggling restaurant owner whenever both your parents are dead. And, you know, we didn't know if it was going to impact children at that age either. So she told me, to, can you make a documentary series? She funded an entire documentary series in the middle of a, of a pandemic, in the middle of everything shutting down. So I think it was like March 25th or 30th. I don't know when it was, somewhere in there, like when it was fresh and new and raw and real. It was right after the, the restaurant shuts down. And I got in my car, kissed my wife goodbye, and I drove all the way to California all the way to Los Angeles and we just started shooting these videos and we were just impacting all of these restaurants. Everywhere we went, it was like digging a well because they would be able to tell their story like I'm telling you my story right now and there would be a line around the corner. So all, all of that, I was just an instrument in Nama Moran's um, arsenal. She was the one who, who funded it. She was the one with the idea behind it. All the credit goes to her and her company, Cheetah Technologies. 
and she she paid me you know a from as a restaurant owner she paid me a, a very great deal of money to make that happen and I just couldn't turn it down and she gave me an ability to feed my family and to keep my family you know housed and taken care of so that that was that was March that was April and uh, I got back it was after Easter when I got back or around, around Easter I remember I was in a hotel on Easter day I believe and we got back and, and then I just started hitting the ground running um, and what I would do is I was taking all the ideas from the restaurants that I was be interviewing and I was like how can I apply that to my own restaurant and I remember actually when I was in San Francisco and when I was in, uh, I was in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, I think it was in Phoenix, Arizona. Anyway, I was just talking to all these operators and asking them, what are you doing? How are you staying alive? How are you managing it? And they would give me all these like, little feedbacks and I would call in my manager and like, hey, we should do this and doing all these things to stay relevant or to give back to the community or try to make a few extra dollars in sales. I was lucky that I was in the suburbs. If you own a restaurant in the city, you know, we had that summer of unrest with the Black Lives Matter movement. And a lot of the downtown areas were shut down. Um, a lot of them were vandalized, destroyed. Even before that though, even before that movement, which that was almost like the nail in the coffin, before that, a lot of these people that were downtown were now working remotely from home in their suburban areas. So they were ordering lunch takeout in the suburban restaurants, which these suburban restaurants never got lunch business. But all of a sudden, uh, you know, me as a suburban restaurant was getting all of these to-go orders for lunch because they were stuck at home working and uh, they needed to eat. So that was kind of a blessing in disguise. Again, I'm, I'm only talking about me, my restaurant, and my journey through 2020. You know, we, we were seeing the sales go up, and we were seeing the the love and support. I don't want to call it money in the bank and sales, and I, I, I hate to say it because I'm trying to stay so humble. And I've talked to some other industry people, a lot of people who are in uh, home and garden, who are doing like fencing and landscaping, because everybody was stuck at home, so they finally decided to fix their fence, or decided to put money there. A lot of guests, I talked to a lot of people. Uh, ironically, a lot of people have kind of discommunicated. I've actually, you know, we've been talking to so many people that come sit at the bar and make small talk. A lot of people have had their best year ever. And I was I was no exception. I, I think it was a, a blend of, of luck, strategy. I think it was me putting in the work over the past seven years is almost like the community was paying me back. You know, like, hey, I mean, they didn't want to keep me alive because they didn't know me. Like they, they developed, you developed a relationship with me over the past seven years. And I was like, you didn't want to see me go. And you could have easily, you know, my community could have easily not came into the restaurant. And all it takes is one bad month and you're basically, you're out of the game. Lost my train of thought. So April, we came back. To go orders were still fantastic. Still trying to be entrepreneurial and still trying to be innovative and creative and like how to stay relevant. That's been the story of my life for seven and a half years is how do I stay relevant? And that's what I was doing every single month. We did the world's first quarantine beer dinner. Uh, that was something fun and unusual. It was like five courses with five beers. I got the huge filming gig from Nama. We had a outpouring of love and support from our community with sales never being higher. And we qualified for the second round. We qualified for the first round, but we, we got the second round of PPP loan from the government. With, with those three things in alignment, you know, our financials never looked better. But there was another piece of the puzzle, and, and that was uh, the people. I've had Terry Lindsay, she's been working with me for three years now, two and a half years, and she has been doing phenomenal things, and she has shown herself capable of being able to operate a restaurant in herself. I was able to leave for two months during the pandemic, 
And I've talked to other restaurant owners, and like, there's no way I could have ever left my restaurant. And I, I left the restaurant, and she ran the whole thing. And I think she's more than capable of running the restaurant. And when I was driving to Beaver's Bend State Park with my daughter uh, this past November, my assistant pastor from my church called me, Tim Nation, and he got furloughed or laid off a job. I'm not sure what you guys call it. He got fired from uh, his corporate sales job, and he asked me if he, I could help him out, you know, give him some, some work to do. And I did. I was like, yeah, come on by. I don't know if I have much for you, but, you know, you can definitely be a server and, and wait tables, and I can get you as much money as I can. I just, I hate it when people ask me for a, for a job because it's like, I can only give you what I can give you. Like, and I feel like almost bad because like, okay, this is a serving job, this is a restaurant industry. It's not like corporate America. But he came by and he started waiting tables and it got me thinking. I was like, I have an opportunity to have this, this fantastic corporate gentleman come to my restaurant and work and he's out of a job. I have all of these financials that are fantastic right now. And I have Terry, who has proven herself a, a fantastic restaurant operator. And I'm thinking to myself, it's time to make a move. It's time, this is it, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to do what you've always wanted to do since you opened your doors at Open Group Tavern it's your chance to to pick a second location and i i said it in videos prior and i i had the proof on, on my facebook messenger i i messaged elias pope with uh i think it's called 8020 concepts he owns standard service and hero he's been in all the vlogs and he in a message i said i want to rent this space and he said yes and that's that's how we came to be a second operator. It was just a perfect storm of great things that happened in the most horrible of times. But I had a duty, and I have a duty, but I have a duty, a fiduciary duty to my community, to myself, to my employees, to my customers, to my family. God has given me the God has given me all these things where if I don't open another restaurant, it's almost like I'm doing a disservice because I have an opportunity to employ more people and I have an opportunity to, to create more value for people. My mind shift has, has changed a lot since then, talking about my growth and my development to growing other people, developing other people, and growing this concept beyond me and taking myself out of the equation. So that's, it's a fascinating, notable shift that I'm kind of undergoing right now. The entire time I kept ashes on my forehead and, you know, wore dark clothes and stayed in mourning. And a lot of people are saying, how dare you open another restaurant after you've been so outspoken about the restaurant industry, but that's the whole thing is is I Speak on behalf of my industry I'm not necessarily speaking about me and my restaurant and there's a lot of people in our industry that Don't speak English as a first language that are immigrants that don't have a voice not that I have a voice either, but you know, I, I try and when I say how horrible the situation is, and it is very horrible in a lot of places. It's horrible here, uh, it's, but it's horrendous in other parts of the country. And I don't wanna get into the, the, the political side of it and the, the re regulation side of it. It just is what it is. It's, it's horrible for our industry and it's sad and it sucks. So I am allowed to say that as my freedom of speech. I am allowed to say that, and I will continue to preach that uh, until we're at 100% occupancy, because um, I just, I feel like my personal belief is like, you should have the right to go eat at a restaurant if you'd like. I would love to put a sign on the front door that says, you know, may cause 
coronavirus if you dine in. But anyway, I don't want to go on that tangent. But just know that when I speak out for our industry, it's not like poor me, poor Costas. I am speaking out on the industry as a whole. That's all I want to talk about today. Something different, just me hanging out with you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you enjoy these type of videos where we're just hanging out, having a cup of coffee, a cup of Icarus coffee together. And I will see you guys in a more flashbang pop video next time. If it's your first time here, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would love it if you hit that thumbs up button. It helps with the algorithm. Leave a comment below what was your favorite part of this discussion or if you have anything to add that would be pretty dope and i will see you guys in the next video cheers